Good day to all. I want to talk about how I keep reading posts and getting people commenting and messaging me that I just don't understand that they're going through such hard times, that they're being tempted, and it's just so hard to stay on the path that Christ wants for us. You know, they're just so depressed and all this other stuff. And, hey, all that's real. But see, Eve was tempted. Some people say he was deceived. But she was tempted by Satan, the author of lies. And she fell. She committed a sin by eating of the from the fruit of the, the tree of knowledge because she wanted to be more like God or whatever that may have been but she wanted to have more knowledge right and Jesus was tempted for 40 days in the wilderness and then Satan came to him and did everything he could to convince Jesus to Just serve him. And Jesus just quoted scriptures. That's why memorizing scriptures is so important. And I'm not trying to talk down the people that say they're depressed or they're having issues. Because we all have our issues. We all have our weaknesses that cause us problems. And with that being said... Many of y'all don't know much about me because truthfully I don't have very many people that are viewing right now but one day one of these videos is going to really hit home and it's going to blow up. And I, it's not to make me famous, it's to lift up the Lord. This has nothing, nothing to do with being famous. I don't need to be famous because Christ already knows my name. And he goes... When the Father goes and looks at me, Jesus says, He's one of mine. So, so many people are sad or depressed because they don't understand that all of this is just, if, you, if you're a believer, it's Satan's way to get you to stop pursuing your walk, your journey with Christ. And if you're not a believer, it's Satan's way to keep you from finding Christ. Because if he keeps you tied up in knots, worrying about what tomorrow brings, then you can't focus on what you need to focus on, which is following Christ or looking for that thing that fills the void that you're trying to fill with all kinds of other things that Satan just keeps putting in front of you and you just keep picking them up and digesting them and they just... Do you know good? <laughs> See, no matter if it's eating too much or starving yourself or eating and then throwing up to lose weight, thinking you're too fat, too skinny, thinking you're too ugly or too beautiful, or um, maybe it's that you're depressed because you're always in pain. Hey, I'm always in pain, but I'm not depressed. A little background, this morning I woke up, middle of the night, my wife had laid on her, part of her weight on me, and at night I have to be able to toss and turn, because I have a very bad back, with uh, discs that are pinching my sciatic nerve and my spinal cord, and uh, they give me all kinds of fits, and if especially if I can't readjust when I start getting something getting pinched, I just naturally move, right? Because it starts hurting. <laughs> well, last night, my wife, uh, I was such in a sound sleep because I was exhausted. And she must have been exhausted because she didn't move all night long uh, until I woke her up when I woke up in such pain. See, my back was, got into a bind and 
anybody that has nerve damage knows the feeling of your feeling like your skin is like on fire like it's wax paper you can't it feels like it's like so dry but on fire and nothing you do eliminates the the dryness some people will describe it as an intense burning or athlete's foot feeling but it's not athlete's foot it's actually nerve damage and nerves getting pinched and from swelling and sliding of disc and other things well i was in so much pain this morning that i was in tears and a lot of people will say oh well that's that's bs well, I can tell you right now, anybody who has back pain, true back pain, understands when your back takes everything away from you. I mean, I have bad knees and bad ankles as well, but the thing is, is that I'm not dwelling on it, right? I um, I laid there and I, I moved and moved and moved and finally, after a few hours of tossing and turning, being awake, not being able to go back to sleep because my whole left leg from my about mid-thigh down, was tingling and numb and on fire. I felt like someone was running lightning down the side of my leg and top of my shin. And it was just, I had, it was just excruciating. Like someone was lighting you on fire or cutting you with a cutting torch. Um, as I've been burnt by a cutting torch. So, I mean, that the pain of being burnt by a cutting torch is physical pain from the extreme heat but this pain even though it's just nerve pain is more intense than the cutting torch burn and see i take a pill that to help slow down those uh nerve endings so i don't feel the pain is is um abundantly but that doesn't help much anymore um my dosage isn't high enough and i have refused to go up in dosage um, I take the bare minimum of this nerve suppressing uh, pill because I, I don't I don't want to slow my nerves down so much I can't feel anything. And Lord, the Lord knows that. Oh, I could use it as an excuse, you know. I not to toot my own horn, but I uh, found a few things that needed to. Uh, be repaired that I could repair because I have the knowledge to do it. So I volunteered to do it at our local church. And I got one fixed and I got a one part coming in and and I'll get it fixed. But with the way my back's feeling, it may be a few more days before I get it done. But I'm not using my back as an excuse. See, I work when I'm working, I work 70 hours a week. And I just don't do a normal job. I sit down, but I'm a, a truck driver, so I I, if you've never been in a semi-truck, then you just don't understand how much of a beating your body takes. And uh, I also drive an antique semi-truck. And it is a smooth ride, but is it as smooth as a new truck? Of course not. Um, but anyways, um, the thing is, is that I'm not going to sit here and and use my back as an excuse to just lay around and do nothing. Now, there are days that I have to take it easy. Like today, I'm not doing much. I mean, I haven't even washed dishes yet. Because I just can't stand that long to wash dishes. As I'm being a stay-at-home dad right now. For the next couple months. And trying to just enjoy the time with my family, which we all need to do. But the point is, is that... See, Jesus was tempted. And do you not think he was tempted more than me and you? Our pastors and our leaders are tempted more than we are. You know, some people will call me a leader. Um, I know that in some circles I'm thought of as, a, as a, a leader in the church. I just look at myself as a servant. If you want to give me a title of a leader or X, Y, Z, I don't care. I'm just a brother in Christ. I'm an evangelist. That's my calling. You know, I'm not seeking a title. I'm just a brother in Christ. And I'm not going to stop preaching the gospel just because I'm in a little bit of pain. I'm not going to stop doing things with my children as much as I can because I can't go out. I, 
I tried playing basketball with them last week, just shooting some free throws and two days in a row, and I just couldn't do it. I was, it was just too much for me, even though it was only like 10, 15 minutes each day. It's just physically not possible anymore. And, but I know my limitations and I step over them all the time because I'm not going to give in to pain. You know, I can't walk as far as I used to because I can't stand that long. I can't jump and run. I couldn't run. If I was had to run, I I don't know what would happen. Um, I don't even know if I'd make it 50 feet before I collapsed. I don't know because I'm not going to try. But I can tell you one thing I am going to try to do. And that is I'm going to continue to try to be the best servant that I can be. And depression... Oh, we all get sad at times, and we all get depressed. But we all that are believers need to realize that no matter how sad we might get or how hard or depressing the times might be, we need to remember to lift up and look because Christ is right there. He And if you're not a believer, He's there. He, you just haven't invited Him in. So invite Him into your life as Lord and Savior. And I'm not saying that it's a solution and it's going to get everything out, you know, warm and fuzzy. Now, you'll feel better and and you'll still have your depression and you'll still have your struggles and temptations. But yet, you'll know where to go to get the strength to get you up and out of that mess. Nah, it's, in a, it's never, you know, like I said, it's not sunshine and lollipops when you become a believer. You still are a, a human that is a sinner by nature. We all have our flesh weaknesses. But Christ is there to give us the strength to get it beyond it. So if you're depressed, maybe it's over this election that's going on in the U.S. It seems like there's always a little bit of voter fraud, but it looks like there's a lot more voter fraud. And no matter if Trump wins, who I support, or if Biden wins, who I do not support, because I think I know that he's a Marxist, socialist, communist-minded person. And Kamala Harris, or however she wants to pronounce her name, uh, that is not, uh, they are both socialists at best. Marxist and communist is more like it. Um, they're tyrannical. They're going to be doing all kinds of things against the body of Christ just in making it harder for us to do what we do. And I'm going to tell you right now, if it goes against doing something for the Lord... I don't care what the law states. I'm going to continue to do it because the Lord wants us to go out and do it. So if they say I can't go out and worship, I'm going to still worship. I don't care. Let them arrest me and then I'll worship the Lord in jail. Now, I'm a resident. Uh, um, I have residency status in the country I'm in right now. But I'm an American citizen. And there is a difference for me. If I was in America, there was no way in the world that they're going to tell me I have to wear a mask. There's no way in the world they're going to tell me that that I can't worship my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in an open forum. They there is no way they're going to tell me I can't go to church. That's just not going to happen because like many of the pastors I've seen that are doing stuff in defiance of the local city ordinances that say you got you can't have church, which that's against our first amendment right in the United States. I applaud them and I'm praying for them. And if I was in their shoes, I'd be doing the same thing. Here, where I'm at in the country I'm at, I am not over any church, neither here nor in the U.S., but if I was, and I was the one that was put as steward over it because I, um, by my leadership, um, I would do everything in my power to convince my leaders that we need to stay open. And continue to worship the Lord. And defy whatever orders the cities, the government, the, the states, whatever it might be. Put into the counties. Just defy it. And for anybody that's willing to come, just let them come. Now if they want to wear a mask, if they want to stand 8 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet from somebody else, hey, that's fine. But we must, we must serve the Lord. At all costs. We must serve the Lord and never back down from serving because the moment you back down, then those people that have anxiety issues um, from stress from work or lack of work or they're depressed because of relationships or family issues or whatever it might be, 
that's when the devil jumps in and he's going to just take over and just throw so many landmines in front of us. See, this, it says that idle minds are the devil's workshop. What that means is when we're not focused on Jesus Christ, Satan has, a, has more areas to come in. But if we continually are serving and focusing on Christ, the devil has a harder time penetrating that barrier because we're always looking at Christ. So when the devil throws things in our path, we say, get away from me, Satan. But if we're not serving, we're not focused on Jesus Christ, then we do not immediate response is, get away, Satan. We're like, oh, I can just keep running. The problem is, the devil can keep up. His, his demons can keep up. But the thing is, is if we're running with Christ, and we're running with the full armor of God on, then we can say, get away in the name of Jesus, and we have power. But if we're not worshiping Christ and we're diverting our time and our efforts to worldly passions and we're doing committing sin while we're committing those sins, the devil's cheering and going, yay! Because he knows that he's got you close to making the irreverical sin, which is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So I'm telling you right now, if you're depressed for any reason, overwhelmed for any reason, having trouble because you're trying to get into college and all the online stuff and you're not good at online or because of this COVID crap, you are scared to death and you won't leave your home. Walk past that fear and just trust the Lord. If, if you're trying to get into college, don't worry about it. Apply to the school you want and apply for in-class. And if there is no in-class, then take a hiatus for three months if that's what you have to do. Because by next year sometime, this COVID stuff is going to be like the flu. It's going to be gone unless we let them continually infiltrate us with all this false science. See, 99. Uh, ninety nine point four percent of people that get COVID do not die. And if you take one of these vaccines that are ninety five percent effective in studies that are coming out soon, because this is uh the middle of November, the end of November. I'm sorry, uh, uh, tomorrow's Thanksgiving in the United States. So bless Thanksgiving, everybody, of twenty twenty, but. The thing is, is that then 95% of that less than 5%, less than five, uh, half of a percent, I'm sorry, 95% of, of that half a percent that would die will not die either. So then we're down to like 99.979, I believe, if the math is right. So less than three one hundredths. So that means for every thousand, I mean, for every, what is it, 10,000 people, three, or every thousand people that, that get it, I believe that's right. No, it's 10,000. I believe it's 10,000. But, anyways, 0.03% that get it will end up dying. That's a lower rate than the common flu. And miraculously, this year, no one's getting the flu, but everybody's getting COVID. That doesn't make sense. When in the United States, a country with over 350 million people, we have over 100,000 people a year that get the flu. 60,000, 30 to 60,000 deaths by the flu. Those are the people that actually go to the doctor, which we everybody says there might be a million or so that get the regular flu every year. COVID is a version of the flu. So, be wise. Don't let fear rule your life. Because when you let fear rule your life, you'll become depressed. When you become depressed, you do things that you'll regret. The worst thing you can do is take your own life and suicide, which is murder. And if you murder yourself, that's a sin. You can't repent of that sin, of the breaking that commandment, if you're already dead. So you do the math. If you can't repent of a sin that you've committed then I, my opinion is is that you've just punched your ticket that one-way trip to hell. Some may disagree and say, oh, well, if you, if you were psychotic in the moment, I can't go there. But if you kill somebody and that somebody's you, then you can't say, Lord, forgive me. 
You know, if you blow your head off, you don't have no time to, to uh, say, Lord, forgive me. So be careful. Don't let the demon, the demons and the devil win. Stand with Christ and have joy in your life. Count all trials as blessings. Count all things that you encounter that are hard as joy. Be optimistic, people. Body of Christ, be optimistic. Stop being pessimistic. Always look at the glass. You know, here it's like 90% full. I could say, as a pessimistic person, well, 10% is already gone. By the way, this is lemonade. One of my favorite beverages. But anyways, may God bless y'all. I welcome you into the family. Share it, like, comment, ask questions. Thank y'all. Have a blessed day. In Jesus' name, amen.